You head to the land, headed to the land of enchantment, not the land of the enchanted, as uh, was once uh, said by a president of the United States. Uh, <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> and they're looking for their first win against New Mexico. Drop the first two games to the Lobos in close fashion. Yeah, 5 joining, four or 2 nothing. Joining us now to talk about how to beat New Mexico is BYU baseball pitcher Jared Lesser. Jared, welcome to Studio B. Jared. How are you guys? Thanks we're awesome, me. man. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing great. As are you and your team, 5-3. and three. Uh, I did mention the, the two losses to New Mexico. We'll get to that in a moment. But a uh, group of cardiac cougs. What's the superstition secret that's paying off in late innings for BYU baseball? I have no idea. It would be a lot easier if we could just get it done in the first couple innings. You know, it's a little nerve-wracking to finally start scoring some runs in about the seventh, eighth inning and, and almost like a come-from-behind victory every single time. It's been I like know. sack flies in the eighth, and then you guys win a 14-inning game that, like, goes into the Gonzaga game Saturday. So you yeah. guys, I think you guys should have uh, hurried up a little more. You could have watched the game earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was it was tough to miss that, and and all the excitement that was going on with the basketball team. And, you know, we just got to watch highlights and, and check it out after the game. So so what is it about this team that makes you guys so good, able to rally and come back and win late? I would just say, like, team victories really right now. I mean, if you look at our lineup cards at the end of games, I mean, we have, like, seven, eight guys coming in to sub, pitch hit. I mean, you got guys, defensive substitutions for an inning, um, pitchers coming in throwing to one batter, pitchers coming in and throwing four innings. You know, it's really it's really just been a team win and everybody just kind of coming together for the team and, and getting it done. Yeah, the 14-inning uh, marathon against Cal Poly on Saturday night is memorable. What is a game like that for a pitching staff? How, how do you balance that and manage that? I mean, the biggest thing for, like, a pitching staff is just, like, you know, who's next? You know, it's like anybody who's struggling a little bit, you know, guys get on, especially a close game and extra innings. It's like, okay, we got to hurry up and rotate the next guy out. I mean, we had position players getting ready to come in and throw. Mitch McIntyre, starting center fielder, he comes in and throws an inning. Um, then you got guys who threw the game before, the nine-inning game that we lost 10 to nothing. Guys are warming up, going to the game again. Cooper McKeon um, pitching back-to-back. -back. Tyson Heaton pitching back-to-back -back games. So it's just really all hands on deck. Who's ready to go? You know, who can throw an inning? A couple I've, pitches. I've been impressed by the freshmen. Who, for sure. Who have come in and, and been lights out, especially against Oregon State. It was like the last three or four pitchers. Yep. They're all freshmen, and they got the win. Yeah, I mean, cold-blooded, man. I mean, you got to have nerves of steel to go in, especially a team against Oregon State. You know, easily could be a little intimidated making, you know, a couple guys making their debuts against Oregon State. And just to go in there and just just trust their stuff, man, and just and just get it done for us. Every win feels good, but which of the five wins that you have uh, piled up this year has been the best overall for the team, do you think? Overall, for me, I would say probably the Gonzaga game. You know, starting off the season, big win against a conference opponent. You know, set the tone for hoops. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonzaga's um, picked to win the conference, no less. Yeah, which I mean, yeah, we kind of proved that wrong, but <laughs> a lot of balls to be played. Yeah, yeah for let's sure. Go, let's but go. I mean, even just like I mean, we came back from them. You know, they they threw a really good left-handed pitcher with a good changeup. I mean, and then as soon as we got him off, you know, we just grinded some at bats, got him off the mound, and and then just took over from there. So. Let's talk about you. Uh, 6'4", 220, senior from Price, Utah State Eastern. Yes, sir. So played in your hometown, and now you're at BYU. What led you to come to Provo? Um, honestly, the coaching staff. Um, you know, like when I came on visits and stuff, they really just made me feel accepted. Um, and, then, and then being close to home, you know, being able for my family to come up and see me play often um, and go back home and visit a little bit. So. Uh, do you can you play wide receiver on the football team? You're 6'4", 220. Jaron Hall could throw you some passes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, not anymore. My football days are over. <laughs> Jared Lesser, BYU baseball player, yes, is sir. with us on BYU Sports oh, Nation, now, yeah. an outstanding pitcher. <laughs> what makes this team unique compared to all of the other teams that you've been a part of, whether it be BYU or not? What makes this year's team unique? I would say the biggest thing that makes us unique right now is uh, a lot of young guys. I mean, we have... I mean, we have three seniors, and, I mean, all of us don't even feel like veterans because all of us are junior college transfers. So, I mean, this is my second year. For a lot of guys, it's their second year. It's their first year. Um, and even, like, a majority of our juniors, you know, just coming off a two-year mission. So then, you know, they've only been back on the team for another two years, too. So it really feels like everybody's just really young, which I think is, is really unique for us and, and gives us that opportunity of, like, a lot of growth, a lot of guys get some playing time and really kind of, like, find their spot. What are your uh, what are your pitches and what's your best pitch? So I throw I kind of throw like a cut fastball and then I have a slider curveball and then kind of a changeup. So I would say my best pitch is cut fastball and a slider. 
for sure. Who influenced you as a pitcher growing up? <sighs> Who influenced me as a Whether pitcher? Whether it was pros or coaches or anything like that. Um, honestly, a pitcher that I really looked up to is a pitcher from my hometown. His name is Brady Martinez. Um, he was in the Yankees organization, worked with me as a young kid, and and just really like looked at him as like a kid from Price who actually you know made it. So, you know, I really looked up to him a little bit, and and he really helped me a lot with pitching growing up. I love going inside the mind of a pitcher because, as you mentioned, you have to have nerves of steel in some high-pressure situations. So let's put you in a hypothetical scenario. Bases <laughs> loaded, full count, two down, late inning, game's tied. What's happening in your mind? I don't even – just get the guy out, really. I mean, just throw your best pitch, trust your stuff, um, trust the guys behind you. I mean, that's the biggest thing um, as a pitcher, just being able to trust the defense behind you. Um, even if you do miss a spot, you know, guys are going to make – guys are going to make a play for you so really just just throw a strike <laughs> you have three appearances but you always won all three games should you play more <laughs> <laughs> um no i mean like uh i mean you know i trust the coaches the game plan and everything that they've got um you know i did the little closing thing against gonzaga started against oregon state and then the fourth game against cal poly so you know really it's just whenever i'm called upon whenever whenever they need me in whatever situation you know i, I just want to be ready to go and help my team win how do you approach that mentally because i, th I think right now you're what the, the the early week starter yeah is that where you're at like a, yeah like the midweek mid starter and then yeah, like, yeah. A, like a reliever of sorts you closed one game right mm -hmm. mentally how do you approach okay this game i may be this but another game i may be that i mean it's all in like the preparation so like if i was getting ready for a start you know it's like the day before i might not throw that much day before that you know get a bullpen in um, but when you're going into like a closing situation, like a weekend series, if I was like a closer, late reliever, reliever, whatever, um, really it's just like keeping your arm fresh all the time, really getting a lot of long toss in and just, you know, really being engaged in the game and ready to go at any time. Jared Lesser is more. I'm sorry. Just, <laughs> you waited till the I, end. Hey, you know, I, I can respect that. that I, that's I, not the first time. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Four games with New Mexico coming up. We mentioned you lost the first two of them in hard-fought battles. What's the scouting report on how to get it done against the Lobos? I would say really just, just get on their pitching early. Um, you know, we kind of – and that's kind of been like a little bit of a struggle so far right now is just a little bit of hitting. But, I mean, you know, pitchers just keep doing what we're doing, honestly. Um, just keeping up pounding the zone, you know, working early ahead of counts. And, I mean, just really letting guys work for us behind us and, and just kind of get on their pitching early, for sure. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. It's good luck uh, in the uh, upcoming games. And do you mind signing our flag? No, yeah, for sure. Okay, awesome. All right, Thanks, Jared Lesser in Studio from B. From Price, man. You know who else is from Price? President Worthen. President and Sister Worthen. Yep. And they know I love Price. Coming up, <laughs> Rise and